Hey guys, let's launch right into our stories. So Hannah prays for a child. This starts on page 118. Hannah dreamed of having a baby to love and hold. She dreamed of singing lullabies to him until he fell asleep in her arms. But year after year passed and Hannah had no baby. Her friends laughed at her and called her names. Hannah cried and cried. Even though she was sad, Hannah prayed in the temple every day. She prayed, oh God, if you give me a son, I will make sure that he spends his life serving you. Eli, the priest at the temple, watched Hannah as she prayed. Her lips moved quickly, but she didn't make a sound. He thought this was very strange, so he said to her, stop acting so silly. Oh no, sir, Hannah said, I'm not acting silly. I'm praying to God because I want to have a baby. Eli looked into her eyes and said to her, go in peace. God will give you what you're asking for. Hannah trusted in God. Soon her tears turned into joy. God gave her a son and she named him Samuel. Hannah was so happy. She laughed and danced and kissed Samuel all over his little face. She sang lullabies to Samuel and held him close as he fell asleep. Soon it was time for Hannah to keep the promise she had made to God. When Samuel was still a baby, she took him to Eli at the temple. She said, I'm the woman who was here praying to God for a baby. God gave me a son, Samuel. Now he will spend his life serving God. Samuel stayed at the temple with Eli. He grew and grew and grew, serving God every day of his life. And our next story is about God calling Samuel, so we're going to fast forward 12 years. Samuel was a 12-year-old boy who lived in the temple with a priest named Eli and learned about God. Eli took care of Samuel, and Samuel helped take care of Eli because Eli was almost blind. One night, something special happened. As Samuel slept in the temple, he heard a voice call out, Samuel! Samuel thought it was Eli calling, so he jumped up from his bed. Here I am, Samuel answered as he ran to Eli. I'm here because you called me. But Eli shook his head. I didn't call you. Go back to your bed. Samuel did as he was told and fell asleep quickly. A little while later, the voice called again, Samuel. This time Samuel was more tired and crawled out of his bed more slowly. In Eli's room, Samuel scratched his tummy and said with a yawn, I'm here because you called me. Eli was getting tired of Samuel coming into his room and said more firmly, I didn't call you. Now please go back to bed. When this happened a third time, Eli thought to himself, Aha! It must be God who is calling Samuel. Eli told Samuel, who is now very confused and sleepy, If you are called again, just say, God, I hear you, and I will do whatever you want. When the voice called again, Samuel did as Eli told him. It was God. And God had many things to say to Samuel. Even though he was only 12, Samuel wanted to serve God. With God's help, Samuel grew up to share many messages from him. People all over Israel knew Samuel as God's trusted prophet. So, how many times in today's story did God call Samuel before he said, I'm listening? So he did it on the fourth time. So he didn't really hear at the very beginning. What time of day did God call Samuel? Do you remember the picture? It was all dark because it was at night. Do you think that made a difference? Sometimes it's quieter at night, right? And sometimes you can pay more attention to the night noises because it's so quiet. So we had silence mentioned in the story when Hannah was praying by just moving her lips and quietness when it was at nighttime for Samuel. So that's an important part of both of those stories. God called Samuel at night and he talked through Eli to Hannah during the day. So when God called Samuel, he wasn't sure where the sound came from. He tried to find it around by saying, here I am. Have you guys ever played Marco Polo in the pool where you call Marco and the other people call Polo and you have your eyes closed and you try and find the person? So that's kind of the same thing, trying to find something when you don't know where it is. So there's a different type of location that's used by certain animals called echolocation and bats and dolphins use it. You might want to look it up after our lesson today. And they send out a sound which bounces off of objects and back into their ears. So that's pretty cool. That ties in with what we were talking about earlier with animals at the beginning. So God calls people of all ages and sizes. So it doesn't matter if you didn't hear it the first time or the second time or the third time. Maybe you hear it the fourth time. And Eli was very young, so it's hard to listen sometimes when you're just a young person. So just make sure that you're listening, and if God really needs you, he'll call you more than once. So let's say a quick prayer, and then we'll be done. Dear God, the story of Samuel is a reminder that we should be like Samuel and be ready to listen and respond to your call. We know that the time and place may be the same, 
or be very different, no matter when or where, open our ears and hearts to what is important. Amen. Okay, guys, thank you for joining me. I'll guys, see you next Ms. week. Hi, Janice here, and here's my friend, Miss Diane. Hi, guys, how are you? And she is a vet, and this is her personal animal, Charlie. And since we're talking today in our lesson for week four about Hannah and Samuel and Eli and about hearing and how important it is, I wondered if hearing was any different in a dog. So can you show us if Charlie can hear or not? Absolutely. Charlie is seven months old, so she's a puppy. And so she has excellent hearing, uh, unless she's being stubborn. So let me show you what I can do, okay? Let me see. All right. Charlie! Charlie, come here! Come here! Come here! Come here, Charlie! Oh! <laughs> so, as you can see, she heard my mm -hmm. calling of her, and she came over and she saw, and then she came up and jumped up. So let me show you where the ears are. So these are her little ears, and inside is a canal, and in the inside it's just like yours and mine hearing. We have, they have three little bones that are inside that, that vibrate when we hear, and that allows her to hear me. And so what we do with puppies, just so you know, or dogs, is we do check their ears when they come in for their visit each time, just to make sure that they don't have any kind of infection or anything that would hinder them from being able to hear us. Well, that is awesome. Well, I'm glad Charlie is so healthy. Charlie is very healthy. Yeah. In fact, we got her when she was five months old, and we're going to be taking care of her um, in um, a surgery for her in November so that she can be a big girl. All right. Well, thank you so much for telling us all about it and hey, you're for so sharing welcome. our lesson. And we will see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Guys, let's start with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so in our lesson today, both of the stories include the importance of listening. So God could hear Hannah's prayer, even though she didn't say a word, because God was listening to her heart. And in the second story, Samuel heard God calling him in the middle of the night. Since listening was such an important part of both stories, that's what we're going to talk about more today. So to start off, how do you hear things? Point to where you hear things from. That's right. You hear them with your ears, right? Your sounds with your ears. Have you ever heard of your eardrum? Okay. Well, we're going to listen now to a little part from a vet who I know and we're going to see how she knows when an animal can hear or maybe has challenges with hearing. So I will see you in a little bit. 